We have some very special guests here. Shalom Aleichem, what's your name? Mordechai from Darchi Torah from Farakway. First grade. You know, I was in first grade in Farakway in Darchi Torah. You know that? You knew that? What about second grade? That's when they kicked me out already. <laughs> Who's your Rebbe? Rabbi Rapkin? He wasn't my Rebbe. Maybe I'm even older than him. How old is he? Is he very old? White beard? Black beard? Beard? Huh? Orangish. Ah, so he's kind of young. Young. Givaldi. Same regards, Rabbi Rapkin. What about you? What's your name? Minasheh. Minasheh from England? What grade are you in? Fast. Also fast? <laughs> wow. Where's the Gemara? You know it by heart? He also does not Two first graders. The shear is getting, it's going, it's getting a higher and higher level as we go along. Oh, we have the art collection. Do we have another art collection for this guy from Menashe? Okay, Givaldi, anybody else that needs to be... Shobai, what's your name? You look kind of new. I'm Patrick from Queensdale. Queens, yeah. What grade are you in? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Givaldi. Queens, New York. Um, not that much going on today. I guess Bibi, listen to me. Step one. He's going to get on the news soon. Now, he told me, when I spoke to him, he said, this is nothing. Wait until, I think, in two days or so, they're going to bomb the nukes. They just needed to make a path. So don't, don't, don't get excited. Don't, don't worry about it. I call the Seder. It's just... It's to throw them off a little bit. And we're not supposed to say anything, so we're not going to really tell the world. <laughs> I trust this message finds you well. I wanted to discuss an idea I've been thinking about regarding your daf Yoimi Shir. Mm-hmm. I'm reading this because I actually discussed this message, uh, not this message, this idea that mm-hmm. I had uh, a few months ago, and I discussed it with Ariel. I asked him to actually do a... Um, a mock-up of this, he's working on it still. It takes a long time. I asked first. I asked um, Seltzer. He said, "Yeah, okay, fine." But the idea is like this: I propose offering a condensed version of the shear. I firmly believe that a shorter format could attract a wider audience, particularly those with time constraints. I think it would be great if, after you finish recording the shear, I can take I. Oh, he's willing to do it. Take out all the parts that are non-Gemara and put out a shorter version for those that are pressed on time. That was Masupak. One of the things I thought maybe we put it in our new um, app or something, not, not just to give an incentive to get the app. 
But basically, take out all the emails, all the jokes, all the musr even, all the stories, all the interactions between people in the shir. Put it on one and a half speed. Take out all the breaths of air. There's a program that does that. And then we compete with... Uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a 10, 15 minute daf. Plus there'll be pictures. The pictures will be there. It might be something. We might lose a big audience here. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to discuss this further and explore how we can work together to enhance the reach and impact of your teachings. Looking forward to your thoughts on this proposal. Warm regards, Ben Rokach. Okay, I'm in. I want to try it out, Taka. I wrote down to 17 minutes. Yeah, that's after he took it. Yeah, that was I did I did one Erev Yantuf without any emails, without anything, with no no jokes, nothing, just dry. Yeah, I could read I could read it quicker than that even. I was, I was actually, yeah. If you wanted if that's what you want, I said whoever wants is plenty of shooting like that. There's a guy that does it already, condensed shear, Givaldic, five minutes. So here's a question that we're gonna be discussing today. So somebody owes somebody, let's say, uh, you know, a thousand dollars. We'll get to the sponsors in a second. Okay, we'll do sponsors first. Wait, wait, you wait a second. Yeah. Do we have to re-record everything? No. Okay. Let me know when I can go. Go. It's Matzah Shabbos. Dailam is Mukhiv, and every Matzah Shabbos we say hello to Gershom and Moshe. Boy, say Gershom and Moshe in the booth. Hi, Shalom Aleichem. We have to do that earlier, and then we don't have to say that. No problem. The Masechta for the safe and speedy return of all the hostages. If you go back in history, you will see that every single Mazi Shabbos, since we started, there's something going on in the booth. And it's just a thing. We don't, we don't care. It's, no, it's normal. It's 100% normal. The Masechta for the safe and speedy return of all the hostages. Parasach Chodesh, Lineish Mazachai B'Moshe, Lineish Mazachai B'Asi Yosef. Parasach Chodesh, Health and Strength for Rebelli, thank you. Parasach Chodesh, Lock Family, Lakewood, New Jersey. Because Torah is the best gula. Parnas Achayi, Yosef Ben Chai, is sorry for Parnas Ben Revach. Parnas Shavua, Golden Dove Alert. Official and family in honor of my favorite Shviger. His favorite Shviger. Yichaf, there's a favorite, there's not a favorite. Miss Raizel Snow of Detroit joining the great. There's a, oh, talking about the favorite Shviger, there's a famous, uh, the, the Mepharshim talking about this. How come other Mauritian lived so long? Because he didn't have a Shviger. <laughs> So the snow of Detroit joined the great great grandmother's club. May she earn her entry many times over till 120. And Paradis Achoydis for the for the art, for Schos Rebelli in the whole MDY staff to continue to make Torah so enjoyable for so many. Yeshur Koyach. Yeah. Okay. So the question is: a guy owes you, let's say, 500 bucks. You chase him, you chase him, you can't, you can't get it. And uh, somebody just sent me, literally on this question, somebody just sent me, uh, I guess I'll show it tomorrow, uh, a beautiful muscle from the Dubna Magad about this. So a guy owes you $500 and you go after him and he, he keeps on ignoring you. He comes to a point where it's already, he's crossing the street, he sees in shul, pretends he doesn't see you, etc., etc. So you have a great idea. You tell him, listen, you have this electric bike you want to sell him. It's a... $3,000 piece, you sell it to him for 500 bucks. You guy's all excited. Of course, he has the money in his pocket. <laughs> it's not a Shem Shaila. He pulls out the 500 bucks. You take his 500 bucks. You get on the electric bike and you drive away. Is that okay? No. Yeah. Ethan G says no. Oh, by the way, a big mazel tov to Ethan G. Oh. The other day, we were talking about Shnai Mikri Vechatargum. He says, what is that? I explained to him what it is. He said he's in. We made a deal that if he finishes Chumash Bereshis, he's going to make a big seum. And uh, he's going to get a helicopter, he's going to fly with a helicopter, and I'm going to pay for half. <laughs> Whatever it is, as long as it comes in. <laughs> right after the shear, right after the shear, and we could learn inspiration from this, right after the shear, without wasting any time, he went and downloaded an app for Shnai Mikra Targum, and he finished Parsha's Barashas that evening. Shnai Mikra Targum. And to show that he's serious about this, he made a seum and he actually brought one cookie for me today. <laughs> Thank you, Eitan. I appreciate it. And he wow. brought the bourbon. Oh, wow. listen, we're going places. So, Beis Hashem, you should continue. He already showed me. He started doing noyach already. Not a joke. We could take inspiration. I'm telling you, today the hardest parish, in the, I think, in my opinion, was a hundred, close to 140 something psukim, 146 psukim, and you have to do it all within two days. Next 
Uh, next week is longer. We have a whole week. Tzadik. It was harder for the Kibayim. Next week is 153 or something. But first of all, it's all about animals. It's kishmak. You know, this is hard. Barashas is hard. Fight. Where are we? Oh. So that's what we're going to say. Anybody say that it's mutter to do something like that with a scooter? Motor. You say motor. Anybody else? Motor. No one knows. Okay. Tanur Abano. We are holding on the bottom of Kuf Chav Beis. And with Beis, two lines from the bottom. Losses Loi Pishnaim. When the Torah says that a Bechar gets two portions, Pishnaim Kecha, does it mean two times the brother? So if there's ten brothers, instead of dividing it into ten pieces, you divide it into eleven pieces. And one brother gets two pieces and everybody else gets the rest. Or, or perhaps it's two-thirds. A Bukhar gets two-thirds regardless of how many brothers there are. There's two-thirds. Here's a mock-up of this. You have five brothers total. Either... One brother gets two sixths, and every other brother gets a sixth. In other words, he just gets two times a regular brother, or the Bukhar gets two thirds, and everybody else gets whatever it is. They split the third. If there's ten brothers, you have to split the third ten ways. And if there's four brothers, you split it four ways. Which one is it? So we kind of know what it is today. What is it? The first one. Vidinu, maybe you can argue, if he divided with one brother, or divided with five brothers, he only gets double one brother. Ooh, you guys are going to like today's shear. I have a little surprise for you. Do you like elephants? No, not now, not now. No, no, not now. I'm not ready yet either. What about you? You like you like animals? Yeah. What kind? I know. Lions? Can I bring yeah. a little lion here? If I brought a little lion, would you be looking? A little one. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. You'll tell me afterwards if you like it. If you don't like it, tell me, okay? I take... I'll listen to you. If you say you don't like it, if you don't like it, I'll put it away. All right. So, uh, soon, soon. Wait, wait. It's coming. But you have to listen well. The whole shear. You like it, huh? I see he's getting excited. Little elephant. Little... Or maybe no. Just like if he... Divides the inheritance with one brother. There's only two brothers in the whole thing. One brother gets two thirds, the other one gets one third. So perhaps even if there's five brothers total, the Bukhar gets two thirds. So now the Gemara brings us a bunch of reasons why it's not like that. We go with the first one. The whole Pasuk is extra. And therefore, we learn from this Pasuk. Hanchile has banov, he gives over two portions, even if he has banov, many sons. Like you guys said, I asked you which one, you said the first one. That's how the Gemara calls it, the first one. And what the brother gets, two portions, not two thirds, two portions. And this always brings up the, the, the question, why my why do you need another pshat? And after what he did, Reuven, when he took the, the bed from, from Bila to, to, to Leah, he, he, Yosef got two portions. So you see over here, he got two portions. A Bechar gets how much? Two portions, not two thirds, two portions. Don't, don't think that uh, he's a Miyuchas, Yosef is a Bechar. He's not a Bechar, he just got two portions. Yehudah was a king, he was strong, everything. And the Bechairah 
goes to Yosef. So once again, you see the Bechayra mm-hmm. is two portions, not two thirds. Nemra Bechayra le Yosef, Nemra Bechayra le Doirois, Ma Bechayra Hamur le Yosef, Pishnaim Gechel, by Yosef was two portions, one more than the brothers. If you, if you divided all the Shvatim, <laughs> Yosef didn't get two thirds of the Shvatim, he got doubled in one of the Shvatim, doubled in Ruvain, doubled in Shimon, etc. So you learn from that, for all the generations, Pishnaim Kechel. I gave you one portion. Shechem is a portion, one chalik more than your brothers. So once again, you see the idea that it's one portion more. It's not two thirds. The charbi, which I which you took, I took with my sword and my bow. As a side note, the Gemara says, did Yaakov Avinu actually go to fight with an actual sword? No, my, my sword is not going to help me. My bow, I'm not going to rely on my bow. Ella, bow and arrow. Ella, charbi zu tfilo, kashti zu bakosha. Yaakov Avinu fought with tfilo, bakosha. What's the difference, Rabbi Isa, between tfilo and bakosha? Anybody? What do you say? What's the difference between tefillah and bakasha? Do you know? No. Maybe the adults. Anybody from the adults? Tefillah and bakasha. So the Meshach Chachman says, beautiful. It says a sword has razor sharp a sword. If you just touch a sword with your finger, it'll cut your finger on the spot. An arrow is not that sharp. An arrow with the, a device you could shoot it a long distance and it'll hit somebody. Today we have missiles. You look at a missile, it's not sharp. If you bang your hand on a missile, it's not going to hurt you. But if it comes from a distance, oy va voy. So he says beautifully, the cherev, that's what Chachamim instituted. The, the, uh, the tefillah, the shmona esrei, the different tefillahs that we have, that's like a sword that works even if you're not very good at it. Even if you don't know much what you're saying and you're, you're in different worlds, you start traveling, thinking about Iran and this and that, you're all over the place. It has powers. Be, why does it have power? It has power because... It's not all these... Uh, it has powers because it was instituted by Chachamim. Now, if you were to say your own tefillah, your own tefillah is nothing, really. You try, you say tefillah, and it, you don't mean it, and you don't think about it, so you get nothing. It's dull. But if you put a lot of power into it, you put a lot of kavana into it, a lot of thought, and you, you're serious about it, so the more you pull it, the more you use it as an arrow, the more you pull, the further it goes, the more power it has. So that's, keshes is referring to your own bakasha. That depends on how much you put into it. A lot of work. It goes far. A little work, it just drops right over here. But a cherev, saying Shmon Esrei, obviously it's much better if you have kavana, but even if you don't have kavana, it does something. My Vaimer. Now we have to understand why the Gemara brought so many psukim. We started saying out, Vahoyo Biyoim Hanchilo Isbana, that's a very strong raya, that Abkhar only gets two portions, not two thirds. Says Gemara, the Rebbe and also. That we had the other day, Rebbe and Brigham says, if a person has five sons and he decides to give all the Yerusha to one son, it's not so nice, but it works. If he has five daughters, no sons, he decides to give all the Yerusha to one daughter, it works. So that's what it says over here. That's what we're learning from the Pasuk. He can decide who to give the Yerusha to. So it's not really saying how much. Tashma, that's why I need another positive. When Reuben Bechor Yisrael. Okay, so we, now we have another source. Maybe I'll say... Here, here's the two psukim. The word Bechorosai, the word Bechora, they're very similar, but not the same. So maybe I can't learn one from the other. Tashma, Baha Bechor Yisrael. It's much the same word. The bottom pasuk, habchayra, and the other pasuk that we brought, habchayra liyosef, it's the same word. So maybe you could learn yosef to the rest of the habchayra. 
the idea from Yosef that he got only two parts, not two thirds, to to bechayir l'dayres. And we have to continue. We need another raya. Why? Because who told you that Yosef got two parts? Who said? I gave him another per, another portion on top of his brothers, in addition to what the brothers received. So you see that Yosef got two portions. Maybe all Yosef received was one tree. He got the portion that all the brothers got, plus one tree. For you, there's a special pasuk. The two portions that Yosef got, which are Ephraim and Menashe, it's the same size that Reuven and Shimon received. Not just the one tree. A whole portion in Eretz Yisrael. Bye, <coughs> Mirei. Yeah, okay, so they discuss it. Start from the back, start from here, start from there. Bye, Mirei. Reb Chalim and Reb Shmuel ben Achmeni. Maro Yaakov shenodu b'chayim Reuven when the son of Yosef. What happened that Yaakov Avinu decided to give Yosef two parts? Reuben is the Bukhar, not Yosef. Ma'ra? What do you mean Ma'ra? Ubechalala Yitzu Yaviv. It says Mufurish in the Pasuk that Reuben did a big no no. He went, took the bed out of Billah's tent, put it in Leah's tent. For that, he lost it. You're right. Ma'ra, he lost it. But why did Yaakov Avinu give it to Yosef? Maybe he should give it to Yehuda. Why Yosef? This is similar. A person brought up a Yosem. He adopted a kid. The adopted kid became very wealthy. And he said, Let me take some of my Ashiros and give it to my stepfather. This obviously is a big, big exaggeration. We know that most of the time when you adopt a kid, when he gets older, he probably kicks you and shoves you down a stair, a flight of stairs. The ones that I know at least, they have zero... <laughs> the guy owes it to me. What do you mean? I did him a big favor. I let him adopt me. I mean, you see with your own kids. You don't have to go that far. That car is not that people have is... It usually doesn't happen. A guy makes a lot of money. says, oh, you know what? Let me think about my adopted parents. doesn't happen. If you know of a case, let me know. I know for character cases that they did mamish terrible things to the adopted parents. If, if not for the fact that Ruvain sinned, he wouldn't give Yosef anything else. Now, what happened? I don't want, let's go back to the Pshat. Who's the Yosem in this case? Yaakov Avinu. It's a reverse. We're talking about a father and a son. Over here, the father is the son and the son is the father. Because Yaakov Avinu is the Yosem. He came to, to Mitzrayim and didn't have any money. His son, Yosef Avinu, Yosef Atzadik was the king. The, he, was, he was wealthy, the, the second command. And he said, then once Yaakov received all this benefit from Yosef, he said, you know what? I have this extra piece. Let me give it to who? Let me think, who, oh, let me give it to my son that, that, that benefited me when I was in Mitzrayim. So it says Gemara Amalei, Bilav the Chodah Ruvay, and the Hanalei Liyosef, and the Madam. What he wouldn't, he wouldn't any just because Ruvay sinned. That's why this all happened. And if not, he wouldn't give any benefit to Yosef. Hello, Rabbi Yonason, Rab Chaloi Kachomar, Ruvay Yosef Bechayir Lotzeis Mirachol. In fact, Rachel was supposed to give birth first to Bechayir by the name of Yosef. Should have been Yosef Shimon Levi Yehuda, whatever. Not Ruvay Shimon. The Chsev Eila told us Yaakov Yosef first should have been Yosef. So we have Gemaras here that even these first graders learned in school. I know the, kid, the guys from uh, Darche learned that. I don't know about you guys. Everybody knows this Gemara. But we're going to learn some beautiful extras here. Leia, Davin, before Rachel. Rachel. First, Leah beat Rachel to it. She died first. But Rachel had a special tznius. Gemara explains. What does it mean? Leah's eyes were full of tears. And whatever that caused her eyes to do. My rakois. Mamish. 
The Torah is describing how unattractive her eyes were. The Torah wouldn't do that. The Torah doesn't even say this animal is tummy. Mamish in our parasha. Yeah, this parasha is Shavua. We're ready in Noyach. Yeah? You see? Kiss from Hashem. Minabehema Tahiro, Minabehema Shainer Tahiro, Noyach had to bring whole safari onto the table from the kosher animals and the non kosher. But it doesn't say. It says the animals that are not tar. That's how it calls it. So you think the tar is going to go and say that Leia's eyes are terrible? We're going to Sadiqim Dibar Kosel? Leah had the Levia. She had Yehuda and Levi. She had all the kings, Davra Melech, Shlema Melech, everything. And she also had Aaron Akoyen, Moshe, all the, the, the Kohanim, everything. So, this is once again, you see this thing. Yaakov Avinu, he so wanted to marry Rachel. And Hashem says, you know, no, not today. It's going to be Leah. Oh, what's going to be with the Shidduch? I thought, it, you know, this is my Shidduch. And Hashem shows that at the end of the day, what happened? Everybody in this room probably, I'm assuming, is either from Yehuda or from Levi. There's no Yosef and Binyamin right now in this room, I don't think. So from his Shidduch that he thought... Where are, they're somewhere. I don't know where that Sarah says Shvatim are. They're somewhere, but not here. What you think is good might not be good. What you think is bad is good. We don't know. Hashem has Cheshbaitis. But here, from Leah came out Levi and Yehuda. Shemat Rukois. Her gifts were long. Whereas the gifts that Hashem gave Rachel didn't last that long. Rav Omar, Loilom, Rakis Mamish. No, the Torah is describing her eyes. And it's a beautiful thing that her eyes are unbeautiful. Why? It's a praise. She would stand at, the, at a fork in the road. How do you say it? Crossroad. And she would hear people saying, Rivka has two sons. Lavan has two daughters. Just like my parents, they married family. I also have to marry family. And this two and two. And she would ask people, Tell me about the Shidduch I heard. What's the older one like? They would tell her, Not Lashon Hara, this is Lateyelas. Ishrau. Milas Nimbri is a terrible individual. And what about the younger one? He's a tzaddik. He learns Torah all day. Says the Torah. It's a, it's a shvach. She sat there and she davened and davened and cried and cried to Hashem. Until Hashem listened. Hashem saw that she's hated. My snua. That she's literally hated. You think HaKadosh Baruch was going to say in his Torah that Kavinu hated his wife? Snua means that she noticed that her potential chasen is a bad guy. And that's what she hated. And therefore Hashem gave her children. Listen to this, Rabbi said every word, every word is gold over here. What was the big tznius that Rachel had? Yaakov told Rachel, I'm your father's brother. He's the son of the sister of her father. You want to marry me? In, yes. The problem is, says Rachel to Yaakov, I can't marry you. He's a very, very lying kind of guy. He's not a straight person. And you cannot beat him. What, what, what does he lie about? I have a sister that's older than me. And he's not going to leave me. He's not going to allow me to get married before my older sister. We had this the other day. It came like a, almost like a lacha. 
You're not supposed to marry before your older sibling. My law. I am just like him when it comes to lying. I know how to lie just like him. And she said, Is a tzaddik allowed to lie? In. Says Yaakov, you're not allowed to lie. Im novar di tovar. A person who's straight, you act straight. Vimikesh ti tapo. But when you have a person who is crooked, when you're talking about crookedness, then you act crooked. So going back to scooter. the scooter. Oh. Right? Oh. So you're wrong. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe. I'm not a rabbi. Am I. And we're not passing. Uh-huh. That's a chiddush. You're not? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, good job. <laughs> ah, you should have seen. We'll put up a, a thing from uh, from Friday. The Hebrew shit. Masala, but when he comes, bring him in. Masala Simonim. What happened? He said, listen, he's a liar, he's crooked. I'm going to show him what crooked is. So Yaakov Avinu gave Rachel Simonim. What kind of Simonim? What are the Simonim? Huh? Anybody remember? Not you, not you, not you. Huh? I'm going to say it again. Whoever was here, when I ask a question, whoever's here for the Hebrew shir, please don't answer. Yeah. Yeah, what? He taught her Torah. He did. Then it could be. Certain Torah, what Torah? Oh. So what he taught her is halachas of, according, this is what they say, halachas that have to do with women. Nida Chala and Hadlaka Saner. So it's, it comes out very, very nice. Rashal for a drone says, let's just finish the line here. My, my sister will be very ashamed because I have signs that she doesn't know. So she told her sister the signs. All of a sudden, it's the morning, and Yaakov Avinu just then realized that he married the wrong woman. It's Leah. Seems like until then it wasn't Leah. So what do you have here, Tzadik? Do I have to hold it? Yeah, you have to hold it. It's not. His name is Elira. What's his name? Elira. Elira? Eliran. Eliran here. You like snakes? Yeah. Oh, this guy loves it. How about you? You like snakes? Let me just put it down here for a second next to. We went to the biblical museum. Ah. Is it poisonous? No. It's just a little poisonous, not a big deal. <laughs> So this is, I, I brought it here because it has nothing to do with the sugi, obviously. But this is an ikish titapo. This, this is the way that uh, ikish goes. It's crooked. It's, it's also, also, this has a lot to do with the parasha. Yeah? You learned that? Voracious. This is, this is the most hated animal, I guess. No? Is this a hated animal? You like it? You love it. <laughs> I just fed it. Woman, what's your name? You're Mantros? I'm Greenman. You look like a Mantros. Well, Greenman, what? The, your father comes to the shir? No. Where's what's oh that's your uncle. What's what's your father's name? And the other one, the uncle? Yuda. So who comes down with shit? I forgot about it. Yuda, Yuda. Alright. He comes in the morning, my dad. This is Gishma. So how long do you have? you found him here in Israel or you just you got him? Someone gave it to me, but, uh, but where was he? He's a local? Yeah, it's a boa constrict. It is? Does he bite a little bit? Yeah, if you hold his head. Uh-huh. Let's see. <laughs> Thank you very much.
You came to, to Stefanski share when he had the snake, the day that he had the snake. Remember that, okay? You're 50 years old. You too. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so where are we? So, our boys, I just want to say, I have to tell you this Rav Shomshva drone, it's unbelievable. He points out the godless of Rachel. What happened was, if Yaakov Avinu told Le- uh, Rachel, this is my sign. You go like this, and then you go, okay, so it's not the same thing. Because then Rachel goes to her sister and says, listen, the signs, and we're going to lie, we're going to do this. Instead of me doing it, you're going to do the signs, great. No, that's not what happened. Says Rishon Shradron, that he, she took her sister and said, you know, you're getting married. You're going to be making bread. You have to know how to do challah. You take this, if it's a certain amount, you that. You, know, you have to know about the Lakas Ner. You have to know about Tarish and Mishpacha. Comes the wedding, and Yaakov Avinu, he needs to know the signs. He says, okay, how do you take challah? Boom. So she thought her sister was teaching her halacha. So she knew halacha. She didn't realize that her sister gave her the signs. But it even gets better. Typically speaking, when you do something like that, you give your friend the codes. The next day, you say, hey, you owe me big time. So at some point in the next few years, you're going to slip up and you say, hey, you got you know, you to pay up. Look what I did for you. Rachel never said a word. Rachel always let Leah believe that she was the chosen one. That Akash Baruch Hu, through her tefillahs, Yaakov Avinu decided, okay, I want to marry Leah. She had no idea for all the years that Rachel gave the codes. And it remained like that. So when you do a chesed, you do it fully, you don't let the other person know, hey, by the way, it was me that dropped off the thousand dollars at your door the other day. No, it's not, no, it's a secret, that's it, end of the story. It's an unbelievable thing. That's, that's what the Gemara means, snua. It was so hidden with a beautiful midah of tznius. So the Gemara, Bayaminei, Abba Khalifa, I'm sure everybody knows the answer to this. When, when Yaakov Avinu came to Mitzrayim, the Torah says it was 70, but the problem is it's 69. So what's the answer, Rabbi Yisai? Who knows the answer to this? No? Well, well time at Hillel, I know you know. Let's give somebody else a chance. What do you say? Yocheved. Very good. Where was Yocheved born? But what does Ben Achaimis mean? No, no, Ben Achaimis? Who said Ibn Tzraim? Ibn Tzraim. Oh, but again, he's answering because he's here. He's not listening from minute to minute. Oh, okay. Zog the Gemara. How do I know that? Omar Lay Toimais and Dina. So, shot number one is. The seven is because Dina had a twin. The Siv Ace Dina Bitoi, because it says the word Ace. As the Gemara of Adam is in Binyamin, the Siv Ve'ez Binyamin Achav Ben Imai. So you're telling me that there was a twin with Binyamin? It says the same Ve'ez over there. Obviously not. And that can't be. It says the Rosh Bam, he's just trying to see if he's good, if he's quick, if he's able to come up with the answer himself. Omar my God is Toivo Yisbi Yodim Atam Mabakish Lavdim Meni. I had a beautiful gem over here. And you're trying to, to make me lose it. It's your chavid. The number 70 is your chavid. And Emma, she yelled at Isa, the lady of Mitzrayim, the daughter of Mitzrayim, vain, her of Mitzrayim. Once again, I, I saw a pshat, a beautiful pshat. I didn't say it over to the Israelis because I saw it today. The Margolis Toiva. What's Margolis Toiva? It's a beautiful gem. Why is it a beautiful gem? Because once again we see, and I just mentioned it on something else, I forgot what it was, but just a few weeks ago. Over here, as Klai is going to Mitzrayim, not before and not after. As they're going in, boop, Yocheved is born. Who's Yocheved? Moshe Rabbeinu's mother. The Geula comes right then when you're coming in. It's my goal is Toiva. Not just another kid. This is Yocheved. It's my goal is Toiva. Another thing is, another pshat I saw, why it's Margolis Toiva? Because the Torah always says, um, you know, you should, Tisperu uh, Chamishim Yoim. It's not Chamishim, it's 49. Or uh, you should give uh, 40 Malkus. It's not 40, it's 39. Over here, there's no such thing. It's not 70. Oh, it's 70 minus 1. You should, 
You should know that every neshama of a yid is a margolis toiva. It can't be, oh, it's chaser echad. There is no chaser echad when it comes to neshamas of Jews when we're counting people. Sponsored by, oi, sponsors. You got to do the whole oven down three minutes. Oh, we started a little late, Taka. The Belsky family, in memory of Simcha Beryl, David Olav Shalom, Ben Avram Moisha, Innovations, and Aram, my uncle, Rebbe Cholom, President Official. To be Yitzchus Rakiv Simcha, Ben Feiga, and a Shidduch for Rivki Yudas, Batsi Avachaya, and thank you to Rebbe Stefanski, to be Yitzchus, where we are filled with Maz Brocha, Tzlocha, Parnas Brebe, and Rufuwa. Zoch to Gimara, boy, Minei, did I say the whole thing? It says in the Pasuk, let's see the Pasuk. What happened over here? Why when Rachel gave birth to Yosef, then all of a sudden Yaakov decided we got to run. Why? Why did he have to leave? Then... So, this is the whole sugya that Yaakov Avinu said, the only one that could be Esav is Yosef. So the Gemara is going to ask from two different places that you'd see that Amalek, who's Amalek? Esav was beaten by other people other than Yosef in future generations. It seems like this applies forever. So this is a Gavaldic story, but the oil is coming in, so maybe we'll, we'll go a little short on it. But at one point, David Amelech wanted to be part of the Plishtim to fight his own son and everybody else. They, they refused, they kicked him out. When he got back, terrible thing he saw. Amalek had come into the camp, took everything and everybody, the women and the children. So he asked the Urim Vatumim, the Urim Vatumim said, you could go fight them. So he went. And he found a slave that was dying, that the, the, the Amalek, they gave up on. They said, you know what, he's dying, we don't, we're not going to... Look at, let me see this a second. I just saw something on your thing. <laughs> look at this, Rabbi Yisai. That's his card here. Beautiful. What's your name again? Adir Fartman. Adir Fartman. Fartman. From? For, Fartman. With a P, with, with a, a T? A, a B, Fartman. Fartman. From Farakwe, Yishkoyach. Beautiful. Ah, I should also have one of those, but I need something that doesn't slip. As best as I maybe I'll tell uh, Shlomi he has to print a new one. No, Chas Shlomi, I have 10 of them in my drawer. Okay. Sebes as I am, Apostam Chochem, we have to do something. I can sweat your as soon as one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not my line. That's why it's so good. Zagdi Gemara. Oh, so we're holding with. Dora Melech decides he's going to revive this dying slave. And because he revived him, the slave told him where Amalek is. They were surprised. He got them. He killed them for one and a half days straight. One and a half days straight. And he took back all the shlal, all the money and everything. And he made a lot on it. And he got all the women and the children, everybody. Nobody was harmed. So says the Gemara, Dora Melech, he's from Yehuda, not from Yosef. How did he beat the Amalekim? Whoever taught you Nevim didn't teach you Ksuvim. Oh, there's also people from Menashe. Who's Menashe? The son of Yosef. That's why they were able to beat the Amalekis. Which is Yosef. What's the Yosef? Okay, not the question. And all these people, they beat the shares that played in the Amalek. They beat the Amalek. I don't see that it's talking about Yosef. It's other people. Because Yishi is actually Menashe. I guess we could just do one little sugi here and then we'll do the Hebrew share. So let's just repeat. A Bechar only takes two portions in what is available right now, not something that has potential. Potential profit, a Bechar doesn't take. However, so I'll show you this picture for the hundredth time. I think I showed this picture more than the, 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 the leopard. Huh? Wow, there's a lot of people in the back. Uh, 
Gary, show the picture, show them, show the camera, the people in the back. They're running already to the doors. Are you able to show? He's sleeping over there. Okay, whatever. So, oh, they're all standing, waiting for shears. That's why we have to go. And then oh, to the left, to the left, to the left. Oh, 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 give Valde. Beautiful. <laughs> you know that that's coming out. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> I'm going to check tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, make a joke out of it. Fine. You know, blur your face. Blur your face. <laughs> Long tomorrow. Okay, so, Bachar. This is the one time in my life, and somebody sent me a thing that they're, they're actually shechting. We had Rabbi David that wrote the Sicha Schulen. It's the, the authority on Masech Schulen. He came, we hired him. He did a beautiful thing from the, he took the, a sheep out of his own car. I actually rented a car for this. The sheep was in the trunk. Took the sheep out, showed us. He washed the neck. He did the Oshchita. Cut him open, showed us all the parts. And this is the smashes, and this is the this, and this is the that. Everything that we're learning in Chulin. It was unbelievable. We should have probably done it before we started Chulin. That's what we'll do next time. But because they're doing it tomorrow in the garage. That's what I'm, I'm saying. He, Reb David, anybody who wants to go should go. They're, they're asking for like 20 shekels. Kedaimoid to go. It's 20 shekel. You, for 20 shekel, you can be a partner in this. That's what I'm showing you. That because I bought the sheep, so it was mine. So I was able to give Matnas Kuna for the first time in my life. Who did I give it to? To my Rebbe, my Chavrusa. That's my Chavrusa, Rebidi Kramer. He's married to a Kehenis, and halachically, it's just as good as giving it to a Kohen if you're married to a Kehenis. He has a freezer in his house full of Matnas Kuna, tongues and everything. What's a Matnas Kuna? So here we hid. Yoshi did this special for us. Here's a cow. The zroya, the foreleg, the l'chaim, the jaw with all the, that's uh, that's attached to it, includes the tongue, I believe, and the keva. That we don't know why people want that today. Maybe for kishka, etc. So why is that considered rotui? What happened here? When did the when did the kayin receive this, or the the guy, the guy um, married to kayinus? Boom Anything that comes automatic, we're gonna have a whole sugi about it tomorrow. Kaitzad, what's the what's the pshat? He rented out his the cow, or he gave the cow to, to somebody to, to work with it, and they're gonna split the profits. Or or the cow is grazing on its own somewhere. But y'all done gave birth. The bachar gets two parts. Because this is automatic, it's a birth, it's automatic. Ah, well, Banu Batim, if the brothers got together and they built houses with the money, I guess, from the estate, and they, they, they planted vineyards. In that case, you don't get, and let's just do these three lines here. What's the case? If the father got the, the meat, then he died. Then, of course, the Bukhar gets two portions. If the father did not receive it, this is only potential. A bechar does not take potential. Hacha says the Gemara, famous pshat. The Gemara always says in Shas, Hacha The father had a great friend who, every time he had a, let's say he had a shlach toys, every time he had matnas kuna, he would give it to him. It was automatic every single time for the last twenty-five years. And the, the, the animal had shechita when the father was alive. But the guy didn't remove the matnas kuna and give it to him yet. Because sovr matnas shaloi hurmu. Kemi shahurmu dami. This madama holds that if you have matnas kuna that are, are about to be given, it's as if you gave them. And since he always gives it to this individual, the Yisraelim could count on it as if they already received it, and the Bukhar gets two portions of it. Rabbi Sai, have a wonderful evening. Yishmak Moy, tomorrow morning at 7 10. Huh? Oh, Rabbi Sai, I forgot to remind the Oilam. Tonight is the start of your diet. Remember, it's after Yontif, this is when we're all starting.